Most of us have probably seen videos about ideal radiator placement in various builds, but when it comes to custom loops like this one, builders usually have a bit more freedom to experiment with radiator and fan placement. And in this short video, we'll be discussing a few popular layouts and referencing data collected by the good folks in the Corsair Hydro X Lab. We built a system very similar to the one used in their testing, and we'll be demonstrating a few different configurations to better explain what they were doing and find that ideal sweet spot. Now, a few important notes, all of these tests assume that both the CPU and the GPU are custom cooled and that they're a part of the same closed loop. Please do not follow this guide if you're running an AIO for your CPU and say an air-cooled graphics card or vice versa, or if you're running an entirely air-cooled system. The test specs included a Ryzen 7 2700X and RTX 2080 Ti, both cooled with HydroX gear and packaged in a Corsair Crystal 570X, though for our demonstrations we'll be using an IQ 5000X. And another note, you'll be seeing PSU temperatures in these charts because it was actually installed fan side up, which can help evacuate hot air in cases with perforated basements. So let's start with the first test, a simple front 360 millimeter fan radiator combo set to intake. I run this setup actually quite a bit in smaller cases with limited fan support up top, and the results are usually decent, all things considered, but by adding a second radiator, we can actually increase the thermal capacity of the closed system and at the very least, run additional fans at lower RPMs for a quieter system overall. But before jumping ahead of ourselves, let's add two 120 millimeter exhaust fans up top. Heat naturally rises, right? So accelerating this process should increase circulation throughout the enclosure, hence the dips in temperature that you're seeing here. Fan speed could also be reduced, which is another huge plus, and the pump doesn't need to work as hard either. But this next one might surprise you. Adding a 240 millimeter radiator up top to accompany those two exhaust fans just after the front 360 in loop order does next to nothing for the system. Water temps, yeah, sure, drop a tad, but every other measurement taken in this third config actually actually increases in temperature over config 2. This test clearly shows that the extra cost of adding another radiator does not automatically bring the full benefits which are often advertised by the cooling community. But hold on for a second. Funny enough, changing loop order actually kind of fixes this. So instead of running coolant from front rad to top rad as done in config 3, the order in this case was changed so that water enters the top radiator first. Here, temperatures drop across the board only by about one degree Celsius, but this frees up thermal headroom for more conservative fan and pump curves. Moving on then, the next logical step would be to seek optimal fan orientations. We're back to our original flow pattern, but if we keep our front fan set to intake and then shift the top fans to intake as well, so we have air coming in from the top and from the front, we actually end up lowering temperatures quite a bit more using cooler external air, but also internal case temperature, which is probably the opposite of what you'd expect from blowing a ton of hot air from your radiators into your case. This config actually increases right pressure within the enclosure, which in turn increases flow rate, ergo more heat is evacuated faster through these, especially at the rear perforations. And so far, these are the lowest temperatures attained. But if the goal is to evacuate hot air as quickly as possible, one would think that adding a rear exhaust fan like this one here would aid in this process overall. However, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is shocking to even me. It ended up doing absolutely nothing. All of these measurements were basically identical to the previous test, signaling that air will find its way out naturally. It doesn't need an extra mechanical moving piece to aid in that transfer of air from the inside of the case to the outside, which is pretty cool. The Hydrex team also notes that most cases, right, have enough perforation nowadays, especially at the rear, to make up uh, for any increase or decrease in this internal pressure. The inclusion of a fan back here is merely an aesthetic play. Lastly, we arrive at Config 7. Now, this is the ideal config, folks. The one Corsair actually recommends based on its extensive testing, that is dual exhaust setups for these radiators. With the top radiator fan set to push and the front set to pull, all five are working to remove this hot air from the case as quickly as it enters it through the radiators. And the results speak for themselves, significantly lower internal case temperatures, significantly lower power supply temperatures, and among the lowest coolant CPU and GPU temperatures. So if we're chasing the ideal radiator and fan placement in a closed system, it really doesn't get much better than Config 7. But let's be honest with ourselves, it, uh, it probably won't look 
the prettiest, especially with a front glass panel, like in the case of this 5000X here. You'll probably be able to see your fan frames or your radiator if you went with a push config. Another thing to consider in a dual exhaust setup is pressure that can lead to more dust buildup long term. So if these points are deal breakers, I'd personally go with dual intake. Uh, it's the second best tested and is still far more ideal than what most custom builders will utilize, which is typically config three. Internal case temperatures are higher, sure, but you can flip your PSU fan side down in most modern cases, thus isolating it from the remainder of the system and keeping its temps in check. And as for CPU and GPU temps, they're pretty much the same as they were in the dual exhaust test. Hopefully this video shed a bit of light on the pros and cons of various radiator and fan setups. The Hydrex team spent countless hours gathering this data and it should strongly be considered when building custom loops involving both the CPU and the graphics card. Remember, this only applies when both the CPU and the GPU are part of the same closed loop. With that, be sure to leave any additional questions down below in the comment section and check out relevant links in the video description. My name is Greg, thanks for learning with me.